Welcome back to another episode of What's in the Night Sky for November 2020. But before we dive into today's episode, I just want to give a quick plug to my 2021 Night Sky calendar, which features 12 of my images, and it also has the dates of significant astronomical events pre-written into the calendar, which are applicable to both the Northern and Southern Hemisphere, so shipping is worldwide. They're currently on sale for the next week or two as I'm waiting for the first batch of stock to arrive, and you can find out more by clicking the link in the description down below and head over to my website. Coming up this month, we have the Leonid meteor shower, we have the Northern Taurid meteor shower, Mercury reaches greatest western elongation. There are plenty of targets for star trackers and equatorial mounts. And we also have a penumbral lunar eclipse. But as always, a quick message from the sponsors of today's video, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community for creatives where millions come together to take the next step in their creative journey. There are thousands of inspiring classes covering a huge range of creative topics such as graphic design, photography, videography, freelancing and more. I'm sure many of you watching this video will appreciate Ian Norman's class on nightscapes, an incredible introduction to all things landscape astrophotography. Or how about James Manning's Astronomy for Starscapes, which will help you make sense of the night sky and plan your astrophotographs with ease. I've been using Skillshare for just over a year now and I've used it for all sorts of stuff. There are lots of good classes on freelancing and running a business and also Adobe Premiere classes that help me edit these videos. Premium members get access to all of those courses and you can try as many as you like and if you want to join along just follow the link in the video description of Skillshare Premium. Starting in the northern hemisphere where northern light season is in full swing now and in the late evening you'll see Ursa Major the big bear is low and sweeping across the northern horizon now but then it does start to get higher in the northeast around midnight but if I come back to the late evening as Milky Way call season has pretty much come to an end now you'll see once it gets dark the galactic center is dipping below the horizon but you've still got the great rift this incredible dark dust lane standing almost vertical on the western horizon it's a really nice area to photograph still the bright star Vega there Altair and Deneb making the summer triangle which is now getting lower and lower to the horizon so as the night goes on the great rift dips below the western horizon and then the Cygnus region comes quite low to the horizon. This is one of my favourite regions of the Milky Way. It's really bright and fuzzy, full of clusters and nebulae and stretching all the way up to the Cassiopeia constellation. It's a really beautiful area of the Milky Way. So even though Milky Way core season has come to an end, there's still plenty of opportunities to photograph the Milky Way. The Cygnus comes down to the northwestern horizon just after midnight. You also see Andromeda there. Andromeda's really high in the sky in the evening. So it's nice after sunset to get the star tracker out and do some tracking on Andromeda. If I come back to the early evening again and swing around to the east, you'll now see that the winter circle is rising earlier. So Auriga and Taurus already pretty much above the horizon as darkness falls. They are followed by Gemini and Orion and then eventually Canis Minor and Sirius from Canis Major. So the winter circle now fully above the horizon before midnight in the southeast. And again, it's a really wonderful area of the night sky. Many of the brightest stars that there are. And lots of nebulae and, and, and targets for the tracker as well. So you've got Pleiades, the open star cluster. California Nebula is great if you find your camera astro modified. And there are plenty of lovely objects in here as well. Of course, the Orion Nebula, very popular target for beginners. Flame and Horsehead Nebula, Witch's Head. It's just a really wonderful area of the night sky. Again, I'm going to come back to the late evening to see the planets. And starting in the late evening, we've got Jupiter and Saturn just to the left of the Milky Way. And Jupiter is shining at minus 2, so it's nice and bright. Saturn at a modest 0 0.6. And they set around 8pm local time. Mars still very high in the sky, crossing the south. 
crossing the southern meridian but this month it dims significantly so we had the very impressive opposition last month this month it drops from minus 2.1 to minus 1.2 so it's really dimming very quickly this month so make the most of it whilst you can and it comes out of retrograde motion and continues direct motion on the 17th swinging round to the morning skies for you early risers venus rising just before 5 a.m in the east shining very very bright of course and it's followed by mercury which may be quite difficult to to spot depending on how clear a view of the horizon you have but mercury actually reaches greatest western elongation on the 10th where it will be its highest above the horizon so a nice little pair in there of the two inferior planets and then as for conjunctions on the 12th the moon comes to join venus and mercury a nice crescent moon there on the 13th it's between venus and mercury so that's a really lovely opportunity for a photograph and on the 14th probably a one percent moon it's gonna be right next to mercury that's gonna be very difficult to see you need very perfect conditions and a nice clear horizon and then on the 18th uh the crescent moon now in the evening skies close to jupiter and saturn on the 19th it's even closer that's a really nice photographic opportunity there in the evening skies and then on the 20th it's a little bit further away and then moving forward to the 25th where the moon will be pretty close to mars in the sky and then in the southern hemisphere you'll see the large and small magellanic clouds it's very high in the southern skies spend pretty much all of the evening now very high in the sky but as darkness falls you should get a last chance glimpse of the milky way core and it's almost well it's pretty much is parallel to the horizon which can make for a very interesting photograph and the milky way core will set about 9 p.m closely followed by Jupiter and Saturn so Jupiter shining at a pretty bright minus 2.0 and Saturn at a modest 0.6 so they set in the late evening around local 11 p.m. and Mars pretty high in the sky in the northwest and Mars dims significantly this month so we had the impressive opposition last month but this month it will go from minus 2.1 magnitude to minus 1.2 so nowhere near as impressive as last month so it'll be worth making the most of it whilst you can and then just to continue with the planets in the morning skies you'll see Venus rising at about 3.30 a.m. local time shining very bright of course Venus the brightest of all the planets and then Mercury following just behind but it might be quite difficult to see because it is close to the Sun but it does reach greatest western elongation on the 10th where it will be its furthest from the Sun and its highest above the horizon so if you've got great conditions and a nice clear view you might be able to catch Mercury along with Venus But if I come back to the late evening, you'll see the winter circle, at least we call it the winter circle in the northern hemisphere, of course. The southern hemisphere are now heading into summer. But Orion rises quite early with Sirius from Canis Major, Taurus, as well as Canis Minor and Auriga and Gemini. So if I just turn the constellations on, you can see full winter circle there above the horizon just after midnight 1am and it's also a really good opportunity for a Milky Way arch panorama facing sort of east northeast so you've got the the winter circle region of the Milky Way and then all the way down to the Carina Nebulae and Colsac Nebula and of course the crux constellation if I just turn on the constellations so nice opportunity for a panorama there 
in the early hours of the morning around 1am you also have a good opportunity to capture Andromeda it sort of arced over the the northern horizon in the late evening so obviously the advantage is in the northern hemisphere but nicely you can still see it from the southern hemisphere and it's being chased by California Nebula as well as Pleiades the open star cluster and this lovely area of the night sky with all its bright stars as for conjunctions if you've got perfect conditions you might be able to catch this triplet of Mercury very slim crescent moon and Venus although on the previous day on the 12th you should have much better luck capturing the crescent moon with just Venus in the eastern skies in the morning then on the 18th you might be able to capture the crescent moon with Jupiter and Saturn and also on the 19th it might be a little bit easier as the moon is higher in the sky and then if I just zoom out six days later you'll see the moon slowly getting close to Mars from the 25th the gibbous moon will be right next to Mars high in the night sky now as for the special events this month I mentioned last month that the northern Taurids was becoming active but it peaks this month around the 11th to the 12th but it's a very broad peak it's not a very sharp peak but you can expect around five meteors per hour around the time of the peak which isn't the highest of rates but the good thing about the northern Taurids and the southern Taurids is that a high percentage of the meteors are fireballs so meteors that are brighter than Venus in magnitude. The radiant point is within the constellation Taurus, not far from the open star cluster Pleiades, so it's visible from both the northern and the southern hemispheres. And the other good news is that a crescent moon is not going to hinder the show. Taurus rises higher into the sky as the night goes on, so you tend to see activity picking up in the hours that are straddling midnight. So the crescent moon will be long out of the way and we'll have darkness around the peak. Then there's a slightly more reliable meteor shower in the Leonids, which is active between the 15th and the 20th, but is set to peak around the 17th to the 18th, with about 15 meteors per hour from a dark sky location. The Leonids are quite famous for outbursts where hundreds or even thousands of meteors per hour are witnessed, but that's not expected again until about 2031, when the parent comet Temple Tuttle reaches perihelion, its closest approach to the sun. Those years, the rates tend to pick up, but this year you can probably expect about 10 to 15 per hour. The radiant point is within the constellation Leo, the lion, which rises higher and higher into the pre-dawn hours. So activity tends to pick up in the pre-dawn hours. Luckily this year, a waxing crescent moon will set in the evening, leaving completely dark skies for the pre-dawn hours. So observing conditions are perfect. There's a slight advantage from the Northern Hemisphere, but they can also be observed from the Southern Hemisphere as well. But be warned, these are some of the fastest meteors there are. They enter Earth's atmosphere around 70 kilometers per second, so they streak across the sky very quickly, but a high percentage of them do leave persistent trains, so colorful ionized gas trails that last in the sky for seconds after the meteor itself has burnt up. There's also a penumbral lunar eclipse this month, which is not the most exciting of events. It can actually be quite difficult to see with the naked eye. There's just a very subtle shadow and darkening of the moon. But I'll stick a map up on screen to show you where it's visible from. And I'll also put a link in the video description down below for those of you that want to find out more about this event. But it's not really the most exciting photographically, but it's definitely worth having a look and seeing if you can notice the, the subtle gradient across the moon. Now onto the hashtag Wittens. If you're new here, every month I set a challenge for people to photograph. They upload their images to social media using the hashtag Wittens and I pick my favorite three to win a prize. In third place, you win a copy of my Astro Workflow Lightroom presets. In second, you win a What's in the Night Sky t-shirt and first place wins a photo view photography guidebook of their choice. Last month I asked you guys to photograph the full moon and I also wanted to see any images of meteors. So, in third place was this image from Jay Adamus of the Orion in Meteor Shower over Pieninski Park Narodowy. I don't know how to say that, sorry. But an awesome collection of meteors all pointing back to the radiant point. Lovely cloud inversion and some 
nice mist on the valley floor there. Just a really, really lovely scene. So well done to Janus for this amazing image. Next up, this image from Kirk, and although it's not quite 100% full moon, it's close enough. But I love the framing of the moon. The twilight colours are gorgeous, and that mountain in the distance just adds so much depth to the image, and it's done a really good job to squeeze all of that into such a tight frame. And just a really, really lovely image, so well done to Kirk. And then in first place was this photo and time-lapse sent in by Richard Everett of a bright Orionid fireball uh, with some beautiful colour in the, the trail, in the meteor trail, uh, but also in the time-lapse you can see that the meteor also left behind a vapour trail as well. So it's really nicely captured and uh, quite a rare event. So well done to Richard, you get to win a photo view guidebook of your choice. This month um, what can we do this month? Um, let's go with Orion. Let's go with the constellation Orion. He's rising quite early now, so you guys should have a chance to photograph him. And then maybe next month we'll do the winter circle and step it up a notch. So let's go with Orion. It can be a wide angle view of Orion with the landscape. Or if you want to zoom in on the Orion Nebulae or the Horsehead and Flame Nebulae. Anything to do with the constellation Orion. So that's all I've got for you this month, guys. Thank you for tuning in. Hit subscribe if you haven't already. And if you're going out to enjoy the night sky anytime soon, I wish you good luck and clear skies.